Yeah, let, let's let's look at that with Pius the Twelfth. I'm going to pull it up on the screen because I, I want to get mm-hmm. your comment because this is what everybody always brings up, of course, from Humani Generis. Um, so this is section 37. It says, when, however, there is question of another conjectural opinion, namely polygenism, the children of the church by no means enjoy such liberty. For the faithful cannot embrace that opinion which maintains that either after Adam there existed on this earth true men who did not take their origin through natural generation from him as from the first parent of all, or that Adam represents a certain number of first parents. Now that it is now it is in no way apparent how such an opinion can be reconciled with that which the sources of revealed truth and the documents of the teaching authority of the church proposed with regard to original sin, which proceeds from a sin actually committed by an individual Adam in which through generation generation is passed to, on to all and is and is in everyone as his own. So yeah, can can you interact with that section because again that's what people are going to appeal to. I can, but actually that's that's not the only thing that Pius the 12th said sure. in terms of restrictions. Sure. Um for example, he also if you back up a little bit. Uh-huh. Um in his where he introduces this question, he one of the things that he mentions is that uh, he says the Catholic faith. Well, let's read the previous paragraph. Sure. For, for these reasons, the teaching authority, and in Latin that's magisterium. Mm-hmm. For these reasons, the magisterium of the Church does not forbid that, in conformity with the present state of human sciences and sacred theology, research and discussion on the part of men experienced in both fields take place with regard to the doctrine of evolution in as far as it inquires into the origin of the human body, so this is human evolution, not Mm -hmm. other kinds, as coming from pre-existent living matter. For, here's the first restriction, Mm -hmm. for the Catholic faith obliges us to hold that souls are immediately created by God. However, this must be done in such a way that the reasons for both opinions, that is, those favorable and those unfavorable to evolution, be weighed and judged with necessary seriousness, moderation and measure, and provided that all are prepared to submit to the judgment of the Church, to whom Christ has given the mission of interpreting authentically the sacred scriptures and defending the dogmas of faith. However, some rashly transgress this liberty of discussion when they act as if the origin of the human body from pre-existing and living matter were already completely certain and proved by the facts which have been discovered up to now and by reasoning on those facts and as if there were nothing in the sources of revelation which demands the greatest moderation and caution on this question. So he essentially, in, in section 36, he sets up two uh, qualifiers. The first one is we've got to say that the human soul is immediately created by God, so it's not inherited in an evolutionary process, mm-hmm. and also that um, the 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 formation of the human body is not yet been proved, mm-hmm. and that there are things in divine revelation that bear on this question. And then he goes into the subject of, some people pronounce it polygenism or polygenism, Mm -hmm. um, and he sets up a restriction there. Now, one of the things that is, that needs to be noted when you read John Paul II is he revisits these Mm -hmm. topics, Mm -hmm. and he says, okay, now, 46 years later, in light of the Mm -hmm. scientific evidence that has emerged since Humanae Generis, we now have very good scientific evidence Mm-hmm. that the human body was created through biological evolution. So he modifies that point. He also restresses the other points that Pius XII named, like the human soul is created directly by God, mm-hmm. but he does not mention Pius XII's restriction on polygenism. And this is probably a good time to explain what polygenism is mm-hmm. and what mm-hmm. it's what the alternative is. Mm-hmm. So um, the idea that Adam and Eve were an original human couple that was the only couple of humans that existed is known as monogenism. Um, manos means soul, and so they were the sole human couple, the only human couple. On the other hand, there is an alternative view that there were many human couples. Many is polus, and so the idea there were many original human couples is known as polygenism. And, um, and Pius XII is issuing a caution 
against polygenism or polygenism. Um, the specific language he uses, though, isn't to say it's false. If you, it, we always have to be very careful in analyzing the language that the magisterium uses in its documents, and the language he uses is regulatory mm -hmm. rather than doctrinal, because what he says is that Catholics don't have the liberty right. to entertain polygenism. And he doesn't say polygenism is false. He says we don't have the liberty to uh, to freely discuss it. And so that's regulatory language. Mm -hmm. And then he gives a reason for the regulation, which is that it's not obvious mm -hmm. how to square this with the doctrine of original sin. Because the traditional understanding of original sin is Adam and Eve were one couple, they fell into sin, and we all inherited original sin from them. Mm -hmm. And so he says, because it's not obvious how to square this with original sin, we don't have the liberty to entertain this the way we do other aspects of biological evolution. Well, the, what that did, what the effect of that was, was it focused theological attention on can these two things be reconciled? Can you reconcile polygenism with original sin? And so bunches of theologians started working on that question, they started writing on it, and they started proposing ways that you could reconcile multiple original human couples with the idea of original sin. They, in fact, produced different models for how to do that. And by the 1960s, the mid-1960s, the Vatican's own newspaper, mm -hmm. L'Osservatore Romano, was publishing an article saying, here are several different ways you could reconcile original sin with polygenism. And this was back in the day when getting published in L'Osservatore Romano actually meant something. I mean, today they do reviews of The Simpsons, but Back then, in the mid 1960s, you know, this was a this was a definite sign that your views are compatible with an Orthodox Catholic understanding if they're getting published in the Vatican's own newspaper. And so, for them to be printing stuff like that in the mid 1960s indicates there had already been a shift. You then look, and that shift continues. I've done a careful study of the history of this, but you find. Uh, Paul VI issuing cautions uh, about polygenism, just saying you shouldn't proceed as if it's been proved. He, he's, he's not forbidding discussion of it the way Pius XII did, but he's saying you shouldn't be proceeding as if it's already been proved, because in his view it hasn't. Um, early in the reign of John Paul II, you find similar statements from him where he's he's you know quoting Paul the six and saying look guys he's not saying don't discuss it but he's just saying don't assume it don't assume it's been proved and then later in John Paul the second's reign by 1996 when he gave his famous speech to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences he drops it he mm. goes silent on the question of polygenism so we see this shift happening on the papal level from how Pius XII forbade Catholics from discussing it as a regulation to Paul VI and early John Paul II allowing discussion but saying be very cautious, don't assume this, to the later John Paul II just dropping the subject. At the same time, we see um, a parallel develop, set of developments on the, on the scale of the National Conference of Bishops and the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. In the 1960s, the uh, Dutch Episcopal Conference issued a very controversial catechism that's today known as the Dutch Catechism, mm -hmm. and it discussed uh, original sin and other issues in ways that were problematic. And so Paul VI appointed a commission of cardinals to review the Dutch Catechism and point out deficiencies, and these were then published as an appendix. Well, when they published the appendix, um, and so this was approved, I mean, it was reviewed by the Vatican, it's being prepared by cardinals, this is the Vatican's correction to the Dutch Catechism, it's open to polygenism. It, it, it corrects some of the things the Dutch bishop said, but it, 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 in the revision, it is open to polygenism. You then, in the 1980s, had the German Conference of Bishops. Now, I should mention, 
after the release of the Dutch Catechism, because that was such a problem for the Church, a rule got implemented that national catechisms, if they're being issued in the name of a conference of bishops, they have to be reviewed first, before they can be published, by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith because national catechisms are big, prestigious things. They're going to influence a lot of people. And after the debacle of the Dutch catechism, the CDF now gets to review them and sign off on them before you print them. And so in the 1980s, the German bishops produced a catechism um, for adults, and it was reviewed by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith under the stewardship of Joseph Ratzinger, who was a native speaker of the language of the catechism and who was the head of the CDF at the time. And they gave their approval and let the German bishops publish it. And it also is open to polygenism. In fact, it's it's printed by Ignatius Press. It's called a Catholic adult catechism. I assume people can get at least used copies. They may even still have it in print. But in its section on evolution, it says that not only is evolution not incompatible with the Catholic faith, but that polygenism can be understood in ways that are, that are consistent with Catholic teaching on original sin. Then in 2002, the International Theological Commission, which is a body that's run, it's an advisory body, but it's run by the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, It published a document called Communion and Stewardship, which dealt, among other things, with the image of God in man. And it, in discussing the the issue of human origins, is also explicitly open to polygenism. In one passage, it talks about how Adam could be understood either as an individual or as a symbol of the early human community. And in another passage, it talks about how the human population um, emerged according to the standard account, you know, several tens of thousands of years ago in Africa. And you could understand the emergence of humanity either in terms of individuals or populations. And so you have the International Theological Commission under the auspices of the CDF, again, being open to polygenism and saying we can understand it in ways that are compatible with the Christian faith. And one of the things that the bylaws for the International Theological Commission states is that its documents have to, before they can be published, they have to be reviewed either by the Pope or the head of the CDF, and they can only be published on the provision that the magisterium does not have any difficulty with them. Hmm. And so that means that either Joseph Ratzinger or John Paul II reviewed communion and stewardship ahead of time and concluded that from a magisterial point of view, there was not any difficulty with what it said in terms of um, the question of of, of polygenism. Um, So we have, again, a, a significant shift on this question from where things were several decades before. Also, I would happen to mention that one of the later successors of John Paul II, uh, Cardinal Gerhard Müller, um, who was head of the CDF towards the end of Benedict's pontificate and the beginning of Francis's pontificate, um, he's he is Uh, uh, an author. He's written a book of dogmatic theology in German. It's a big, huge book. Um, But if you read what he says when he talks about this uh, section of Humanae Generis and and so forth, he indicates in his dogmatic theology that this is not incompatible with the Christian faith. It can, polygenism can be understood in a way that's compatible. It's not a matter of dogma that we have to reject polygenism. And there's the head of the CDF saying this in one of his own books, and he then got appointed head of the CDF. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. See you next time. God bless.